uh, welcome everybody to uh, our, our morning Bible study, and uh, we just thank God this day that, that this is a day that the Lord has made, and we just declare that we will rejoice and be glad in it, and rejoice because today is the birthday of me. <laughs> and, well, happy birthday. And, and happy, happy to be here uh, 74 years and, uh, and working on my 75th as of um, this morning, well, early today at 12 this morning, started working on my 75th year. So I'm happy to be alive and well and living in the kingdom of God and rejoice that all my friends are, are surrounding and uh, we're going to talk about worshiping God today, kingdom worship, and, and what it means to worship God. Let me say that we're glad you're here today as well. You are a very integral part of this uh, uh, Coach Soda family. We love and appreciate you. Well, thank you. I love y'all too. I, you know, I, I love coming up here and, and, and uh, being part. Uh, it's like uh, yesterday I had a doctor's appointment. Every three months I go and uh, they, you know, they tell me how good I am and <laughs> or how bad I, or what's going on in my physical body. And I got a good report on everything. Uh, they, um, they seem to think I'm doing okay. So I already knew that. And uh, I went there with that expectation, but I'm really glad. And, you know, it's like um, I went into the doctor's office and uh, they had a new lady that came to... Uh, you know, to do all the check your vitals, to, you know, blood pressure, and get on the thing and weigh. Y'all like to weigh in the doctor's office? Mm -hmm. I don't like to weigh in there. I'm always like, I don't know. But I was pleasantly surprised. I, I had looked at, I hadn't been weighing at my house. I, I looked at my scale the other day and I thought it said one thing. I got on the scale yesterday and realized that um, I thought I had gained a, a whole, a lot more weight than I had. And I got on the scale and realized I hadn't. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That, that uh, uh, you know, I'd only gained like, uh, in the last three months, I'd gained like four, or well, three and a half pounds, something like that. Which, you know, I can gain or lose that in a day. Which, you know, that's, to me, that's nothing. Some people it would be a lot, but to me, at, at my weight, and people who are heavier understand that. that you can go up and down three or four pounds in, a, in 24 hours uh, very easily. But anyway, uh, this this new lady began to ask me. Uh, she said, "I need to order these things for a, a prescription or whatever for you." And and I said, "Well," she said, "What are you What are you taking?" I'm like, "I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know, it, it should be on my the stack of thing there that you got in front of you." And anyway, it started out, and I started getting aggravated, and I could feel it. Have you ever been in a place where you get start getting Ooh. aggravated and just like? And everything that happened, and normally, I'm in and out of there in 15 minutes. And after this lady went out, I sat there waiting on the doctor to come in in the little waiting room and waited and waited and waited and waited. And, waited and I'm beginning to think, they forgot I'm in here. <laughs> they, they've left and gone on or something. But you know how that anxiety starts. And, you, you know, and I started, and then uh, the Lord began to speak to me and said, uh, Look what you're doing, you know. You're causing this. You're causing yourself to enter into that place of anxiety and just that, that old ugly thing that will pop up in us when, when we allow the enemy to come and speak into us. And so I just began to praise God. I began to thank Him and praise Him. And I sat in there, prayed in the Spirit, and, and worshiped God for about 20 minutes. And you know what? All of that stuff left. <laughs> I started... I started feeling better. I started understanding what the Lord was saying that, you know, nothing can come and stay with me that I don't allow. I have authority to keep anything away and I have authority to let anything in. And it's my choice. I get to choose. And, you know, he, he, he said that in the Word. He said, choose you this day who you'll serve. You know, and, and, and uh, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. We declare that. That's our declaration. And, you know, we have to make these choices every day of our life. We can choose to allow the enemy to come and, you know, get us all upset and angry and uh, over nothing, really. 
<laughs> and uh, uh, or we can choose to allow God by the Holy Spirit to bring us into another place. And and uh, this is what I was thinking about in, in this message, this word that we're talking about this morning, kingdom worship. And understanding that is that, you know, um, years ago, uh, we started a work here in Hinesville. Um, and we went out to... Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, which at that time it was the Mecca, you know, Oral Roberts and and uh, all of the all of the faith, Kenneth Hagin and all that bunch. They all had churches there. You know, we went out there to visit with go to it was like going to the Holy Land. And uh, my son went to Bible school out there, Victory Bible Institute, Billy Joe Do- Billy Joe Dollar had a church there of about twenty five thousand people. I mean, nice little congregation. Um and it was there on the campus of the Oral Roberts University, the Navy Center. And, and we spent, we went out there several times while he was there. And of course, we, you know, met all these people and joined the the uh, network of, of uh, folks out there. But one of the things that we saw out there was that was totally different than anything we'd seen here at that time. And we're talking about in the in the early '80s. There was no. There was not any churches in this area here of Hinesville um, that had actual praise and worship. They all, you know, they did had song books and they sung three songs and they had the preaching. That was that was the way the service went. Mm-hmm. And so we went out there and we saw a different world. We saw people raising their hands and praising God, and you know, and they had uh, the praise music. And guess what? They didn't have any song books. They had everything projected up on the screen, so you didn't need a songbook. You could you get the words right off the screen. So we decided that's what we need here. So on the way back, um, at a trip we made, we went to uh, uh, a friend of ours. That in fact, a friend that led me to the baptism of the Holy Spirit was in the military at the time. He was a colonel in the army, and he was stationed at Fort Hood, Texas. We went there to visit with them. And I went into the officers' club there at Fort Hood, and as and of course God speaks to you in bathrooms, you know that, don't you? <laughs> and He spoke to me and said, "I want you to go back and start a work there." Well, you know, work means, uh, you know, get people together and preach and teach whatever. And so as we um, began to come come back, drive back from from Fort Hood back here to Hinesville. The Lord began to speak to me about things with me. One of those things, and I had written down on a little, just a little scrap piece of paper as He was speaking to me. One of them was an overhead projector, and I'm like, okay. So once we started the work here in in Hinesville, we, of course, we didn't at that time we had nobody that could sing or play a instrument of any kind, and uh, uh, Clay wasn't a very good singer. Uh, he might be, but he wasn't willing to. To, to get to lead anybody in singing. So we had a, a group of folks there that were meeting together. And so we had a tape, we made tapes of praise and worship songs and we um, handed out, you know, print out some of the, of the words to people until they learned the songs. And most of them were like, you know, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. And they were real simple praise and worship songs because that's where we were. We were real simple praise and worship people. So uh, as we progressed and, and we entered in and got a building we and, and the Lord provided us with people who, who could lead in praise and worship, who could, you know, play musical instruments and, 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 uh, we had an overhead projector and we had, you know, you had to make your own sheets up of the songs and, and the lady had to sit there and change them. Every time the musicians would change, she had to change the overhead and and a person had to do it. And we're talking a long time ago now. Now they just you just push a button and change everything on the screen, but back then you didn't. So uh, we introduced this whole area to the, the type of praise and worship that's everywhere now. Nobody was doing that. Not any churches. There were no churches in this area that ever... I mean, most of these people thought it was crazy. They're like, people would come in and say, well, where's your song books? And we want to buy you some. We don't want any. We don't want your hands. We don't want your hands to be up here. 
And you know, this is the universal sign of surrender when you raise your hands. So that's what it means when you raise your hands to God. It's the universal sign of surrender to God. So understanding what praise and worship is, and, and we had to really learn about it because we didn't know. We didn't understand praise and worship because we, we had never been exposed to it. All we had been exposed to was, uh, you know, you sung a few songs and, you know, if you had a special choir would sing or whatever, you know, but, but we never had praise and worship, not like, it's everywhere now. And uh, we, we were fortunate and God blessed us to be able to introduce that to this area. And, and of course, after it started, everybody went over a period of time, people started going to that because they realized this is such a greater form to worship God from than, than you know, three songs out of a songbook. And, you know, and we used to laugh about it. We would, my daddy pastored a Baptist church for years and years and all my whole life growing up. And, you know, we sung the first and last verse, you know, and we always joked the same song, second verse, just as loud and just as worse. And, you know, it, it, we... We weren't, we weren't inhabited in the music. And when we had like Southern Gospel people to come in and sing, we just loved that because, you know, normally that was not, not the style in the church. That was like special, always special music to get somebody like that to come and sing. So um, in, in understanding praise and worship, uh, you know, it, it took me a long time to really grasp what it was because I knew I liked that this new type of thing where you, you, you come in and, and, you know, you worship God in the sense that, you know, everybody is there in the corporate worship. And we know this, that if one puts a thousand to fly, two puts 10,000, guess what? If that multiplication, four puts a million to fly. In other words, we're talking about, the Bible says, we're talking about spirits. If one person is able to do this and two is able to do this then what's a corporate worship like when you have all these people worshiping god yep and you're you have a tremendous amount of power operating in that room operating in that place and that's what we learned out of it is that when we had great praise and worship the spirit of god in the people in there was so uh, exalted that, that they were in a place to to receive what God wanted to do and to even be part of it. See, that's the thing. It's like, um, you know, when, when you enter into that place with God, you don't want it just to be, this is just for me. When you enter into corporate worship, you want to understand that everybody is coming together in God. And imagine uh, if one puts a thousand and two puts 10,000 and four puts a million and you've got several hundred or several thousand people worshiping God, how much authority and power is in that room? It's unbelievable. I mean, it's like you can just, uh, you know, change the universe if you understand and are able to receive and, and to get into that place with God. Um, okay. Go ahead. That, well, just, to, and just coming back from our trip, and then, you know, uh, the music worship leader, Steve Swanson, does a really good job of that. Um, not only for Lance's venues that we went to, to other venues, but and it's it's and that's what it's titled when he when he takes the stage is changing the atmosphere, yes. and that's what it, it accelerates yes. the Holy Spirit to go ahead and get moving and change the atmosphere before we start before we start receiving the word, and then yes. that's what we mentioned yesterday, and then I think that we all agreed that it, it, it's um, it is a huge part and it's a huge role, but it does. It accepts to like the throttle for the atmosphere to be changed and let the Holy Spirit to come and, and move and dwell. Uh, to, where otherwise you may be sitting still in your chair in your pew where and your hands are up and surrendered. Um, it's uh, it, it's hard to sit still there. And you're saying, God, I want what you have. Receive I want it. what you have, Lord, for me. Um, and you see, the, the, the thing that I always loved about it is a lot of times God would speak to me when I entered into that place of praise and worship, irregardless of what the preacher said in the message. Uh, I had a secretary when I was pastoring named Liz, and every Monday morning I'd come in and say, Liz, what did God say to you yesterday? You know, and during the 
message. It would never be what I was preaching. <laughs> Why? Because what I'm saying, it, uh, you know, and when we come together in a corporate area, in a place, what you're trying to do is hear what God is saying to you for what you need. Not, not what my great message is. It's not about that. It's about opening your heart up to the Holy Spirit so He can give you what you need for that particular time. And, and you say, coming together in a corporate place of worship, we open ourselves up and say, God, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm open. I'm, I'm willing. I surrender to you. I, I want what you have and I want what you're saying to me. And in, uh, in Romans 12, 1, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, your bodies now, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or worship. Now, um, what is he saying? He's saying the same thing that we're, we're talking about here. Um, you know, it's like if, if every day when we get up that we, we worship God and we, we praise Him and we thank Him and we say, God, I present my, my physical body. See, He's not talking about your spiritual body here. He said, present your body, this body, as a living sacrifice. Living. Not, I'm going to go pray for 10 hours, but I, this, this body is a living sacrifice. Why? Because everybody can see it, you know? Everybody can, this around you can experience that living sacrifice that, that you are. And so understanding this, and, and you know, if you look up, and I, I looked this up, vines, and vines is one of the, one of the uh, places you can go to look things up. Vines is a, is a um, expository of, of words and and meanings uh, that go back into the Greek and the Hebrew and the Aramaic and all of those different areas of the Bible. And so, Vine said this, a consideration of the above verbs, service and worship, shows that it is not confined to praise. You know, it's not confined to just praise. So, um, when we understand that, it changes the, the whole thought of it. In other words, it's like understanding what it really is. Broadly, it may be regarded as the direct acknowledgement to God of His nature, attributes, ways, and claims, whether by the outgoing of the heart in praise and thanksgiving or by deed done in such acknowledgement. So understanding that it's not just it's not just this. It's not just praise. It's not just saying, Oh God, we worship you and we love you and we honor you and, and we give you praise. It's not just that. It goes beyond that. Um, in James 1 and 22, he said, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Um, so what, what are we talking about here? We're talking about not just Sunday morning or Wednesday night or whenever we go to, to gather together and we come together and we praise and we worship and we glorify God. But every day of our life and everything we do, uh, we're, we're, we're showing our love and our worship to God in our actions. In other words, that's part of this. That's, it's not just confined to that moment of, oh, you know, happy day and love you, Lord. And, uh, you know, and everybody loves that. You know, you get in there and it's just, you get excited in your soul and you begin to, to, to praise and worship God. But how about every day? How about, you know, when, when, when you're at work? <laughs> How about when you're, you're doing your job and, and uh, you know, something comes along, and just like I was talking about going to the doctor's office and getting aggravated and realizing, okay, this is, this is you know, I'm not worshiping you, Lord. 
You know, I'm not worshiping you. I'm worshiping my flesh. I'm saying this didn't go like I wanted. It's not, you know, this isn't exactly the way I wanted it to go. So, you know, and we begin to come against the things of God. And what happens in that whole situation is we allow the enemy to steal our joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It's our strength. And so, is the enemy after my faith? No. He's after my joy. Why? Because when he gets it, he gets it all. That's the whole package. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And see, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness comes from the word happenstance, which means something that just happens. It's like if you get a, a new little puppy and he's so beautiful and you love him and, you know, and then you just, oh, he's just so wonderful and then he runs out in the street and the car runs over, kills him. Well, that's a happenstance. You're happy one minute with him, the next minute you're unhappy. And see, that's part of our everyday life. That happens to all of us. And that, those kind of things happen. But that has nothing to do with our joy. You understand? We, we have happenstance. We have happiness. Happiness comes and goes. I can be happy one minute and sad the next because of circumstances. But my joy is not based on anything in this natural realm. It's based on what Jesus did at Calvary. It's based on what He did in releasing me from the hands of the enemy and bringing me into a place that eternally I'm going to live with Him. And see, once I, I, I come into that place, and no matter what happens here, it's like the longer I live, the more I see it. And when I see something, I'm, you know, and y'all, please forgive me because I, you know, I mess up all the time. But I, if I, as soon as somebody tells me or I see it, I'm coming to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I don't want that. Because I can't stay in the joy of the Lord if, if that's happening. If I know that I'm doing something that's not pleasing to God. And, you know, and we all um, do things and, and we allow things to happen that we know probably shouldn't happen at times, don't we? But see, God is trying to get us into a place to understand what kingdom worship is. Kingdom worship is a place that we enter into and that we walk in and that we live in. And that we're not, we're not afraid to say, I'm wrong and I'm sorry. We have to be willing to do that. We have to be willing to give up our, our great image that you, you understand. It's not about any images because every time you create an image that's not from God, guess what happens? Uh, it's going to have to be destroyed before you can go on. In other words, all these images that we create in our mind. Now, um, in, in James 1.22, he says, be, do, be, be doers of the Word, not just hearers only. Um, and he says over here in... Uh, um, James 1 verse 2 my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials <laughs> knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. So, listen to that. But, and, and just not to interrupt you, that, that all your ways, that, that, that one and that verse, is, I've, I've had to go back to that numerous, numerous times because... It says all his ways. And that's it what it means. It doesn't say in his appearance how he treats one person, how he thinks about this. He is double-minded in all his ways. And uh, that, that one, I just had to interject because I think it needs to be in bold print right there and under <coughs> in yes. all his ways to really understand <laughs> that if you're it's everything that you it, 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 it's against everything. I mean, it, it just it encompasses all things that, that of that person. And uh, um, again, that, sorry, that was just it, I've, I've, I've read that one and read that one, and it, it, I've had to really revisit and circle that that all his ways and and, and to, 
to understand the, the full meaning of I mean, that's big. I mean, it's, you can't. I mean, it's, it's not just a few things, but that kind of discards everything that I am doing um, A to Z. Yes, and it affects every part of our life. In other words, I'll, see, that's the thing. It's like when we become double-minded, you know, um, it doesn't just affect that one area that we're torn in. It affects our whole life. And uh, the, the thing about worshiping God is that we worship Him in everything we do, um, you know, in everything we say. And, uh, you know, that's the... That's the thing. It's understanding that it's not just that time when we're we're all together and we're praising God in, in a corporate worship scene, but it is an everyday life, a living. He says, "Present your body what as a living sacrifice." Living, in other words, our life, not not our small window of time that we come together corporately to worship God, or when we do it. Even, even in our house or wherever by ourselves, but uh, you know, understanding that it's a way of life. It is a way that we become living sacrifices. That when somebody hurts me, like I, I got aggravated at this this lady, this young lady that was, you know, doing it in the doctor's office. And, but immediately, then the Holy Spirit's like, okay, dummy. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna let you sit here. I guess I'll still be sitting there if I hadn't have said, "Lord, I'm sorry. Please help me. I'm I'm wrong." And in other words, if I hadn't admitted that and and gotten back in that place, you know, and that's what he's saying here. Uh, he said, uh, uh, "Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing." Patience have its perfect work. Patience. And if you've ever had children, well, we know they try our patience. <laughs> and I'm sure we try theirs, but uh, that's part of life and that's part of living and that's part of becoming the living sacrifice is that having, uh, having husbands and wives and children and friends and, and the folks that we, are, we deal with constantly and coming into that place with them and walking with them every day, and allowing um, allowing ourselves to take the heat, if you will. You know, when something's not right, we have a choice. You know, we can say, "Why well, am I going to tell them and straighten this out?" Well, and that there might be a, a, a time when God is saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, "Hey, you need to approach this in love and speak to this person and say whatever." But uh, it's never going to be in that mode of I got to I'm straight. You know. Not like that. God's trying to get us to a place where we approach the, the things by the Spirit of God so that we are no longer ourselves out here, you know, making things work and trying to put the square peg in the round hole to make everything fit. It's when we come to that place to understand that, that God has a place for us to walk in peace. He's re he designed us to do that. He made us to be able to do that. And when I lose my peace, I know something's wrong. I, when my peace goes, man, I'm, I'm a wreck. Because I know I need to find out what this is and get it straightened out. And, uh, you know, and I try to do it as fast as I can. As fast as the you know, first opportunity I get, I try to fix that whatever I did that I can take care of. Um, and even when you're in a situation where you've hurt somebody else and you go and ask them to forgive you, and it's their choice then whether they will or not or won't. You know, they have to decide, do I want to get in that place? But if we present our bodies, our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is our reasonable service of worship. And service, you know, when we understand that, what, what is a reasonable service? What would you think that would be? Yeah, anybody? What is our reasonable service? In other words, he said, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service or worship. I, th I think it goes back to what you're talking about, don't be double-minded. Be a living sacrifice. That's our, you know, uh, lead by example, 
be a practicing Christian and not and walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Or what he's speaking to you to, directly, to, I mean, to be attained to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and see, that's, that's, and that's right. See, in other words, it's not necessarily... What I want to do, what God want me to do. Right, it's not necessarily... Um, um, well, we're talking about worshiping God. Now, if I don't know what I'm doing, then I'm probably not worshiping God in it. <laughs> I just, you know, it goes to what I'm saying. If I don't know, if I haven't gotten direction from God, if I don't know what I'm doing, if if I don't know this is the path that God has me on, and I'm walking this path that God's put me on, if I don't know that, then I can't worship Him out of it because I, I don't have any faith in it. Faith comes by hearing Him by the Word of God. God speaks. Faith comes. I begin to walk in that place with God, and I know that whatever comes, I'm on the right path. In other words, I'm walking the path that God put me on. And see, that's that's part of of living in the kingdom. That's part of walking in the spirit. That's part of our, our worship of God. Is and, and this this is one of the things that I wrote down yesterday. And uh, um, let's see where it is right here. Uh, stay in your calling. <laughs> Stay in your calling. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Stay in your calling. And you say, what happens when I get out of my calling? Everything gets all messed up. And to, 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 to that point, obedience is better than sacrifice. You cannot make up and sacrifice what you lose in disobedience. No, you can't give enough money in the offering <laughs> to overcome when you know you're not doing what God told you. Which is a really interesting point. What we're doing now is a lot of recruiting. For both of the companies, and uh, and it's we're not we're not really hiding anything at this point with, with, with who we are and what we're doing, and that God told me to be here, and so and a lot of these you know these phone calls and the recruitment is you know get with your wife, go before the Lord, pray about it because if it don't start with God said, we don't want to interfere with what God is saying. That's right. Yes, this may be great and it may be enjoyable, but if it isn't because God said, then we're playing a role in, in, in preventing what, what God is saying. And uh, it's been really relieving to, to be able to be transparent through a recruitment stage in and building companies based around that transparency that uh, to worship, to fulfill what He's called you to do, you need to hear and be acting yeah. according to what, to what He has said for you to do. Right. Because you're not worshiping. If you're doing stuff outside of God's will, that's not a worship to God, I promise you. Because anything I do in my flesh produces what? Death. Death. So, I, I try to do as much as I can by the leading of God. And Lord knows, everybody that knows me knows that's, that's not a full-time thing that I'm doing. That I messed up, but if I if I do something, I'm gonna try. As soon as I find out, you know how bad I messed up, I'm gonna run to you and say, "Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry." And I am, because I don't want to walk in that place. I want to live every day in the things of God. And you know, and it's when when you're in a place with God where you know everything that you know that that's been there and, and just you've gone through you've taken care of all the best you can before him then i can walk in that place in, in peace and i've walked that place in, in in love and joy and uh let the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience gentleness goodness meekness temperance faithfulness all those things are part of walking in worship of god if i don't understand that if i don't understand that the, the Spirit of God has to produce the fruit for me to be able to walk. Um, uh, and, and this is what I, I wrote down some of these things in worship. Use the measure of faith that God's given you. The Bible says He's given every man a measure of faith. And the Bible also says we grow in faith. How do we grow in faith? Well, uh, if you take the, the uh, life of a, of a living person and when they're little babies, they, what, what happens to a baby when it's first born? Somebody's got to take care of it or it's not going to live. In other words, it's got to, 
to be taken care of. Somebody has to feed it and change the diaper and make sure everything's okay, you know, keep clothes on if it's cold, take clothes off if it's warm, you know what I mean. It's like somebody has to take care of that baby. Same way with Christians. As young Christians, somebody has to take care of those young Christians. And and God, I promise you, God has called somebody to, to every Christian that's, that's first come into the kingdom of God. He's called somebody to take care of that baby. And see, that's one of those things that has to happen in order for us to be that living sacrifice. And in the Greek, there's there's several words that describe children in, when it talks about uh, children and sons and daughters and all those kinds of things. The, 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 uh, in the Greek there's several words like there is for love you know there's several different words for love in the Greek and they all mean different things agape is the God kind of love well as a child uh, a napios is a, is a baby I always think of uh, when I see the way I always thought of it in my head was napios is a nipple baby it's a baby that's a suckling for the mother it's a young newly born baby and then and, and that represents the child up to a certain age, and then the pantheon is like, um, it, it goes up to to the teenage year, and then the, that's the technon. And, and of course, that's, you know, that's the time when the struggle happens in all of us, in our walk with Christ, and everything that happens. You remember those teenage years? Those were the toughest years. And I know Ella's, Ella's almost there. Uh, <laughs> She's not quite there, but she's almost there. But uh, those are the, the years that, that we have to really pray over our kids and, and, and trust God with them a lot. And, uh, uh, you know, when, when you come into a weos, that's a fully mature, matured son or daughter. Now, it, in other words, the weos is the fully matured. And, and that's the young, young people in the Lord. Now, they might be, like me, 74 years old and still be a, a young person in the Lord, a weos. But then you go on from there, and the pator is, is, a, is a father uh, figure in the Lord. And then there's a presbyter, presbyter and that's uh, a grandfather in the Lord. So all of these Greek words represent things in the Bible when it's talking about our growth and how we, how we go. And so the worship of God... Um, grows as we grow. The worship of God, we, the more we understand it, the more we understand it. it's not just that that time when the hands are up and you're saying, God, I, I praise you and worship you, glorify you and magnify you. It's not just those times, but it's that daily walk when I go out. That's the worship because this time is a much smaller time than the time we're out there dealing with people. So which which time should we uh, really say, God, help me with and, and look after me in this place and Holy Spirit guide me and direct me? And He will. He wants to. He wants to lead us in that path. And He doesn't want us to get messed up in it. Um, love, I wrote down. Of course, we know. You, you can't operate anything in the kingdom without love. I mean, everything operates by love. Everything in the kingdom of God, faith works by love. It won't work without it. Uh, you might say, I can do all these things, but if it's not done by love, it don't count. In other words, we're building up a heavenly kingdom here. Uh, we're, we're building up a reward. And what did Jesus say? Lay your reward up where? In heaven. Why? He said, the moths can't get it, thieves can't break in and steal it, nobody can touch it. So, what is He talking about? What I do by love is going to last forever. In other words, what I do by the Spirit of God in the, in, the, in the Spirit of love is going to be laid up for me a reward in heaven in a, in a, in a place that, that can't be touched by the things of the earth. In other words, nobody can touch that. What I lay up there can't be touched. So I want my life to reflect that. I want the things that I'm doing to be motivated by love. And... The fruit of the Spirit, of course, you know, uh, the first one is what? Love. Love, love joy, peace. Love all. And see that, you know, if you want to know how grown up you are, just look at those. Love, joy, peace. Am I, am I walking in love? Do I have joy? Am I in peace? Patience, gentleness, goodness. Um, uh, 
my 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 hardest thing was to get under control, and I thank God He's helped me in that area a lot, uh, and and I still have to sometimes deal with it. And most men do, is gentleness. Gentleness. You know, in the South we talk about a gentleman, and that's the guy that opens the door and says yes. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. And no. You know what I mean. It's like we have created an image of what a gentleman is. But the, the, the gentleness that God's talking about here is a very deep spiritual thing that manifests outward. And it, and it shows in a place that when somebody's hurting that I can identify with them. And so love and action. Right. And, and I, can, I can say, man, I, you know, Lord, please help that person because I can see and I sense the, the hurt that they have. And, that, and, and, and the gentleness is not just in, in that, but it, it manifests. My, uh, of course, my background as a police officer and a deputy sheriff and a bondsman uh, it was not relegated to love, joy, and peace. <laughs> it was relegated to a lot of other stuff. So I had to learn to deal with that. I had to learn how to, how to, how to, how to how do I do that, Lord? And, um, and I, I praise God and I thank Him that I, I sense in myself a, a, a lot more gentleness than I've had. And of course, it only has taken me 74 years to get here. So don't worry, you'll get it. You just hang in there. <laughs> It'll come. And, and mine's not perfected because none of us are. But I sense it a lot more than I ever have in, in, in my life. And uh, uh, meekness. What is what is meekness? Um, meekness is being willing to it be wrong and accept other people over yourself. You know, it's just like uh, I used to know everything, and then I found out that I didn't. <laughs> and God has a way of bringing meekness to us by showing. You know, He lets us see that. Uh, I'm praying one day and I'm thinking, thank you, Lord, for all this revelation you've given me. And, and he spoke to me pretty clearly. He said, you don't have hardly any. <laughs> and, I, and I mean, it's like, I'm like shocked. I'm like, God, what are you saying to me? And he said, you only have revelation in what you walk in. The rest of it is just knowledge and it don't count. It blows you up. That's all it does. But you pumped up. So a lot of people have knowledge, but the, the road is very narrow for those that have revelation of what I'm really saying. They can walk in it. Because until you can walk in it, it's nothing but head knowledge. That's all it is. You know, until you can forgive your brother and walk in peace with those that you know don't like you and that you know are, are fighting against you in everything you do. And I promise you this, if you live righteously before God, there'll be people who won't like you. Ask me how I know. I pastored a church for years, and I know there were people that, I mean, I had friends to call up and say, what, what Sundays do y'all handle the snakes? I'm like, oh, <laughs> Rufus K. Smiley. That's what it called. <laughs> of course, he was joking, but, but that's, that's how a lot of people felt when we, you know, a group of us that, got, that were not your average, everyday Christian folk um, got turned on to God. You know, this is the bunch of folks that uh, were 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 a hardcore and, and drugs and all kind of other stuff. And you know, I mean, t uh, more more tending to fighting, fist fighting, and bar fighting and that kind of stuff than going to church. Known for that more than church. So you understand what I'm saying? Coming out of that background, a lot of people didn't understand it, and. Um, you know, that's where we as a witness, you know, have to let these people see that, hey, something has happened to these guys. Something's happened to these ladies. Something's happened to these folks. They're not like everybody that's out here walking around, you know, trying to get something from you, trying to, you know, I, I, I want what you've got, and I want this, and I, you know. Uh, but they're out there saying, hey, I've got something to share with you. I got something that will help you. I got something that will bring you out of that depression and out of that dark place that you're walking in. And I, I heard this thing, I saw it on Facebook. Somebody posted it the other day and it was a, an old song that from years ago and it said, Hello darkness, my old friend. Mm -hmm. I stood up too fast again. And I understand that one. 
<laughs> when you get older and you stand up too fast, you will meet darkness sometimes. But that that uh, that darkness that was in that song that everybody was singing, "Hello, darkness, my old friend." I don't want darkness to be my friend. You know, I want light to be my friend. I want God to shine His light on that darkness so that I don't have to walk in that place. Now, uh, we need to be fervent in spirit, keeping our hope before us, patient in tribulation, and steadfast in prayers. And and in these things I, that I'm just writing down as God has given me things to um, to understand about worship and walking in worship of God. That everything I do and everything I say is a worship to God because I'm, my body is a living sacrifice. I can't escape it. My body is a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Not a, a piece of meat that they throw up on, the, on the, uh, the altar to burn. But I'm alive. And so that means everything I do, I'm either doing it as a sacrifice and a lot of times it's a sacrifice of my, my flesh, my wants, my desires, what I, I want, what do you want, what I want. You know, uh, the soul always says, what about me? What about me? <laughs> what about me? What about me, God? What about me? But the thing that God is trying to do is get us to walk in that place with Him. And as we walk in that place, things start fitting. You know, you, you, you see it's like uh, when I... When I first got married, I worked in the, uh, at Diamond Construction, the shipyard in Savannah, and I worked as a ship fitter. And, and you know, the, the foreman would give you a, a piece of paper and it said, I need a piece of metal to, to, to this size. And, you know, you had to go out there and, and, and measure it all out. And, and uh, then you got the burning people to come and burn it out of the metal. And then you went back and, and you know, tacked it up in the ship wherever it fit. And, uh, um, so, you know, that was a, a, a time and experience of learning um, how and what things mean. In other words, if everything's not in its place, if it doesn't fit where it's supposed to, then things don't work correctly. And, and so God is trying to get us now to operate in a place where things work correctly, where, where our life is not, you know, Life can be such a struggle if, if we let it. But if we let go and say, God, I, I trust you more than I trust me. I trust you a lot more than I trust me. And I'm giving it to you. And walk in that. Uh, giving. And, I, you know, uh, we might not look at giving as a, as a type of worship, but it is. You know, if we don't worship God with everything we have, with our sustenance, you know, what does money represent in your life? If you work for so much an hour, well, uh, you can figure that uh, that's that's what it's worth. In other words, you're you're saying my life that I gave for this money um, has I, I've given I've given this over. So now, God, I want to give you back part of my life that I gave working for this money. So you're, when you give God your money that you earn by working, you're giving Him part of your life. You understand? Because that was part, you gave part of your life. You gave every hour that you worked, you gave that hour of your life to that company or that place or wherever you work, and they gave you so much for it. So when I give God part of that, I'm saying, God, I'm giving you part of my life. I'm, get, I'm not just giving you money. So you got to change the way you think about this because we worship God with everything we do. And when I, when I give Him part of what He's given me for working, then I am giving Him part of my life for every hour I work or for every job, everything I sold and got a commission for. I'm giving Him part of my life. Um, I, got, I, I wrote down here, be hospitable. Bless those who persecute you. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Stay humble. Don't repay evil for evil. 
Live at peace as best you can. Do not avenge. God will repay. Feed your enemy. And overcome evil with good. But how do we overcome with good? It doesn't matter what that person thinks or these people think. If I know in my heart I did the right thing and I did what the Lord was telling me to do, then in myself I've overcome that evil. And God might reveal it and these people might see it or they might not. But it has nothing to do with them. It's about what I do and what God's doing in me. And so that's that's the kingdom worship. The kingdom worship encompasses everything that we do. Um, we used to say this that um, you know in, in the years ago that women's faults are many, men have but two, everything they say and everything they do. So in the women will smile at that and say that is so true. <laughs> but but uh, you know it's it's like understanding that it's not about how that person perceives you. It's about how God perceives you. It's always about Him. It's never, you know, we always want to make it about us, about me, about I, God, I'm, I, and all the things I've been through, God brought me through. All the things I've been through, God brought me through. So I can tell you, um, if you will continue to walk and stay in that place of worship and, and do the things God's called you to do, you will have a good life in the Lord. You will have a good life, and you'll have peace in your life, and you'll you'll enjoy it. Uh, and 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 you know, it's like I I'm glad to say it. Seventy four years old, I I enjoy life. I enjoy people. I love people, and I love to to be around people and see. I love to see God moving in people's lives and changing people and changing circumstances. He'll sell your house, won't he? He will sell you house. And one day, like, yeah. He will do what He needs to do to cause things to happen. And if we'll just trust Him, He's got a better plan than we had. Always. He's got a better plan than I had. And praise God for that. Jenny, I'm going to start with you because you're the worshiper. <laughs> um, you're, that was a good word. And it's, it's, it's a good thing that we... Um... We, got, we need to worship God in, in the good and in the bad. And like you said in the scripture, you know, you praise Him in the good and you praise Him in the bad. And um, I just, I thank God every day, you know, you can allow, just like you were in the doctor's office, you can allow yourself for things to come into you and to stress you out and to, you know, to have anxiety and to worry and cause, you know, strife in your life. Or you can allow the faith and trust in God that, you know, let go of it and let God handle it. You know, you know, for months, um, I was stressing about, you know, these medical bills with our insurance with James. It was over 20 something thousand dollars in medical bills that they were denying to pay because it was a pre-existing condition. So, you know, we fought and fought and fought for months since December, you know, and God's been dealing with me, let go and let me Hamlet, let me trust in me. So, you know, just stop worrying. Don't allow those things to come in and, and cause this in your life. And we got a phone call, or actually I called on Friday of last week, and they overturned the decision. And they're going to cover all the medical bills. You know, and just here recently, just things has been happening, you know, in our life. If you you just got to let go. You, if you live for God, like, you know, with all your heart, God is, you know, I feel like God is going to, you know, He's going to be there. He's not going to just make everything a bed of roses, but He's going to pull you through it. Yes. You know, it's not necessarily you can poof, you're out of this situation, poof, you're out of this situation, but He's going to, sometimes that may happen in that manner, but, you know, other times He's just going to see you through it, and yes. through that, it's going to make you stronger, and then he's going to be able to to use you as a witness to others in those situations. And you know, I just I praise God here lately. I've just been praising God, you know, silently in myself, and sometimes you know, out loud through situations. You know, some things that you know we've been going through. And he's talking about selling the house, and um, we had a showing yes day before yesterday, I think it was, and and it's just something you can sit there. Oh God. 
they're going to do it or they're going to not. And, you know, you think all these crazy thoughts. And, you know, I was telling my husband, I said, you know, my mind is like a, a wheel. And sometimes it just, just keeps turning. Mm -hmm. All that keeps turning. And the devil knows that and he uses that. He tries to use that. And um, I can just allow myself to get into a place and, and take a situation that could be so minute. And, and the devil can just make it like a mountain when it doesn't really have to be. Yes. You know, and let go and let God yes. handle the situation. Stop worrying. And then, you know, let God handle it. And then my house sold. God. You know, Praise just God. things has <laughs> just, just been... Uh happening and I just thank God for it you know I thank God for those bad situations and I thank God for those good situations because if it wasn't for the bad then you know we wouldn't have any lessons to learn or any strength you know to build or faith to grow so I just I thank God you thank God every day that you're waking up and you can take that breath right there you know we take a lot of things for granted that God gives us and sometimes it takes a situation that God will allow you to go through to appreciate and be more thankful um, of that breath. Because yeah. once that breath is took from you, or you're almost to that point to where that breath leaves you, you're more thankful for it. So don't ever take the small things for granted also in, in your life that God has, has given you, just the small yeah. things. But thank God and worship God and stay in that. Isn't that something though with, with those thoughts and fears? And all he's got to do is a little bit. And he said, I'm done. She'll do the rest. Mm -hmm. and just plant that seed and then that fear, depression, boredom, anger, anxiety, sadness, all of those things. We, 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 we do a great job of doing the rest once he gets once he gets that little bit in the pot there. I'm sure she'll do the rest. And, uh, praise the Lord. For that. Uh, two things. One of the things that, uh, that that I mentioned in a, a couple of weeks ago when I was privileged enough to, to deliver the message was uh, about things to keep you out of the walking in the kingdom of God. And one was double-mindedness, and you touched on that today. Uh, that that resonates in me a lot of times because I catch myself saying one thing and doing another. When I do, it's like, man, I, I just it's all it's sinful. It, it it hurts it hurts my soul when I like when I, I tell my grandson something and I catch myself not doing what I told him. You know that makes me shallow, and that hurts. But it's a learning process, uh, and 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 I I, I really uh, it, it's like being blessed with talent, not using it. It's sinful. It's like saying something and not doing what you say. That's to me, if you if you're doing it under the offices of following the Lord, then that's sinful as well. And I'm. It's, He's, I feel very calm. He doesn't appreciate it. Doesn't like that. He frowns upon that practice. Uh, yeah, and it's amazing. And, and I hate to keep bringing this up, but it's made, every time I do a morning devotion, come in on Wednesday. You talk about or, or Clay talked about the same thing that I, that I talked about. And you talked about uh, being a living sacrifice and about uh, light and darkness and all. And, and I, I'm going to take the opportunity here. The, the thing I said I, I wrote out this morning was Second Samuel 22:29. You are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord turns my darkness into light. Uh, the whole of chapter 22 of 2 Samuel is the song David sang to the Lord on the day the Lord rescued him from all his enemies and from King Saul. David also tells of God's love and protection in Psalm 27. David was simply glorifying the mighty mercy and grace of his professed God. Like until biblical times, God offers to all and confesses and acknowledges him the same protection he afforded David. God is our true help for today and our hope for the future. In a world that seems to go darker and darker day by day, the Lord can and will turn our darkness into light. We can trust, we can then play it forward by brightening the lives of those around us by being shining examples of practicing Christians or as you said, living sacrifices. The same thing uh, here on earth. Unwavering confidence in God is our antidote for fear and loneliness. Uh, by being a living sacrifice, that means walking the walk and walking in His kingdom. We can we can be a shining example to other people by the, by the life that we practice and the life that we lead. Right. That's good. Yeah, it's not about you or them, but how God perceives it. I'm, that that alone. I mean, just this whole thing about the worship. You know, you never really. I, I didn't 
you know, when you think worship, you, you think of singing songs and praising God and being in church and all that. But, it, 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 I mean, this is a, touches me a little bit more deeper just because of the, the, the love, joy, and peace side of the spirit of the love. Um, meekness, the meekness aspect of it, you know, ex- as far as accepting other people and you being wrong. You know, a lot of times it's, you don't think about that as, as a praise portion of it, as far as being able to forgive and, and, and to let go and, you know, trying to stay righteous and humble, but also being teachable, you know, allowing, allowing a wrong to teach you is also the worship side of it, because, I mean, that's what it's got. God is perceiving you know, or, or, or wanting you to understand. Um, worship with everything you have. You know, every time I get stuck in a muck, and something's in my head, and I just can't get it out. It's like, devil, get out of here. Devil, get out of here. Devil, get out of here. And, and that's the only thing I do. Even this morning, you know, I've been suffering for three days now with a, with my ulcer. And um, nothing really in, in particular causing it. No really severe stress other than just a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but just this morning before I got up, I just was praising God. You know, God, I love you. Thank you. You know, and just... And it just kind of gave me a sense of peace, and it quit hurting. It just quit hurting. I mean, it's still there, you know, but it just, it, the pain, as severe as it was, it's gone. And um, just allowing to let go, because, I mean, you take medicine, you're like, what's going on now? You know, why, why is my body doing this? And just being able to just let go. Yeah. Yes. It was, it, it's powerful. That's good. Wag was walk by faith, not your feelings. Um, truly giving to God, like letting go, like Janine, you all talked about is when you finally let go of your stress and the worries and like the mind. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, maybe it's the females, but we are our minds constantly going. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, when you find, just let go and just talk to God. And God, I believe in you. I trust you. I, I know it, it will get better. I know this is your plan. It will let go of the stress and the worries. And I have to catch myself a lot because there's a lot going on in my life. And I just have to say, God, you're in control. Please, yes. God, watch. You know, I... I trust in you. I'm not going to worry. I'm, I'm going to let it go. It's in your hands. And I just, I feel better. I do. I you just got to let it go. But yes, walk by faith, not your feelings. Feelings change. I mean, God is there for you. Amen. That's good. Right. Um, a couple months back, Lewis, we had the pleasure of having Lewis Green here, Green Pastors. Um, and he, uh, him, imparted uh, a, a saying and in a mindset concept into me that's uh, it's changed my my worship but even to my prayer life and language and, and it was uh, of course we all say oh, you know, Father we are in heaven we know that but I, I've he it, said God I love you God I adore you God there's no one like you and then and so when I start my intimate prayer that that begins with the worship to, to, to express that it's not just while there are in heaven, no, it's that you know expressing, you know, the the intimacy of, of my love for him that I have solely because of the love that he has for me. And so that it's been for about two or three months that's really resonated with me and it's allowed me to incorporate that as 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 part of the worship. And and I've often and I forget who the scientist was, but there was it was you know it's a it was a forum on a podcast of a of debate of um, uh, you know a, an atheist professor was questioning you know, the existence of God and um, you know um, I, I I've taken out of there is that you know into your point was that you know God's plan is always better than mine. Otherwise, how could the Creator of the universe, if you truly believe that He created the heavens and the earth and me here in a specific time with a specific purpose in the midst of eternity, how would he be how would he be 
worshiping, be worth worshiping if my plan was better than his. And so that is the surrender there to know that you know, I'm one of seven billion people on this planet. He's, he's given me everyone a specific place and time and turning with a specific calling. And so I know immediately I don't want that agenda or that to-do list or that, that those plans because I, I, my mind can't concept and, and so I, it, it allows me to immediately know that my little six pound puny brain um, if, if I could understand and comprehend that that, that he wouldn't be worth worshiping if, that, if, if, if he was that simple and, and so then it has surrender and that's conditioned myself for the daily walk of being able to worship but I took this quote out of a Graham Cook book that I was briefing over and and, it, and it's a question, and I would just want to, 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 to share it with everyone today. And it says, Beloved, what would change for you if you live with a constant awareness of God's delight in the gifts He so freely gives to you? And, uh, and that encourages me for worship um, on um, a 24-7, um, 365 every situation um, uh, mentality and it's not a you know twice on Sunday once on Wednesday type it, uh, it is it, if you could you could live in that constant awareness that the delights of the gift that he has so freely give to us um, I would worship more I would respect and love and I, I would I would I would strive to continuously be more pleasing in, in, in my walk with him. And uh, it's just a, a little note there that I, I thought I wanted to, to share. And that's, uh, that's good. Well, I understand that what Jenny and Charlene said about your mind, you know, going to roll. Mine like, that's rolling. But, and, and the only way I can stop mine, I'll just start saying, Praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, God. I worship you, God, man. And I'll go, I'll do that until it clears out. It'll, you know, and I, sometimes I have to go a while to get it clear out. But I can clear it out, and that's how I do it. And, and uh, I, I, you know, I just had to learn how to keep my mind from getting overloaded because my mind will just. It'll be running like a motorboat, and I don't want it to do that. I want it to, to I want it to slow down. I want to be thinking on the things that are good, and lovely, and good report. And my mind don't want to think that way. You know that your mind don't want to think. Your mind don't want to think on things that are good, lovely, and a good report. It wants to think on all kinds of stuff. So we have a, an ability through worship to relieve that. I thank God for it. Father, I thank you this morning for each person that's here. I just pray that the spirit of worship would come on them each time they come before you, Father. And I pray that everyone that hears this will allow the spirit of worship and glorification from Jesus Christ to come on them and cause them to rise up. Cause them, Father, to rise up and, and be that person of God that you've called them to be. I thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.